We've all been blown away by SpaceX's rapid progress with Starship. Flight 6 was a major leap, and now we're on the brink of even more exciting developments. Flight 7 is shaping up to be a game changer. We're expecting the debut of the next-gen Starship, the V2 version. This upgraded ship is packed with improvements, from redesigned flaps to larger propellant tanks. It's like a supercharged version of the original, ready to push the boundaries of space exploration. But here's the burning question. Will we see a booster catch attempt this time, or will we see the Starship itself being grabbed by the Mechazilla arms? Well, maybe the latter is a bit of a stretch for now. While SpaceX has been working tirelessly to perfect the booster catch mechanism, they might opt for a more conservative approach for Flight 7. It could be a controlled splashdown, giving them more time to refine the catching system. And as for the Starship itself, it's expected to perform a controlled vertical landing in the ocean. This is a significant milestone, demonstrating SpaceX's increasing control over the vehicle's re-entry and landing capabilities. One of the most exciting aspects of Flight 7 is the potential for new heat shield technology. SpaceX has been experimenting with various materials and designs to ensure that Starship can withstand the extreme temperatures of re-entry. We could see a significant improvement in the heat shield's performance, which is crucial for future missions to Mars and was recently mentioned by SpaceX. We will touch upon this in just a moment. After two successful flights in October and November, just 37 days apart, Many, including myself, were optimistic about the possibility of a third launch, Flight 7, before the end of the year. This seemed feasible if SpaceX could quickly refurbish the launch pad and expedite testing of Booster 14 and Ship 33. With no major changes expected to the flight process, regulatory hurdles were not anticipated to cause delays. Unfortunately, that forecast hasn't panned out, and Flight 7 is now officially scheduled for early next year. The revised timeline was revealed in a NASA document submitted to the FAA. According to the report, NASA will send a specially equipped aircraft to Perth, Australia on January 3rd, 2025, in preparation for Starship's Flight 7, which is now set for January 11th, 2025. With Flight 7 postponed to next year, SpaceX ends 2024 with four Starship flights, a remarkable improvement compared to 2023. These flights mark a significant leap forward in refining Starship's capabilities, building a solid foundation for an even more ambitious 2025. And Elon Musk, ever the ambitious visionary, has stated that they're aiming for 25 flights in 2025. Now let's talk about that heat shield system and how it will improve the Starship V2. And just before the sixth flight, SpaceX dropped a major update. They tweeted something that got a lot of people buzzing. We recently tested heat shield materials and a simulated Martian atmosphere as we aim to launch the first Starships to Mars 2026. Along with the tweet, they shared some pretty cool images of their heat shield testing, giving us all a sneak peek into the kind of research that's driving the future of space travel. In the video that accompanied the test, we saw a circular sample of heat shield material being placed into a special thermal chamber where SpaceX cranked up the heat to simulate the intense conditions of re-entry. We're talking flames reaching temperatures of up to 1,400 degrees Celsius. The flames were so hot that they transitioned from blue to purple, giving us a visual cue of just how extreme the conditions were. The material began cracking and melting, and while that may sound alarming, this was actually a planned part of the test, what engineers call a controlled failure. These failures are crucial because they give engineers valuable data on how the materials hold up under stress. It's all part of refining the heat shield so it can stand up to whatever the future throws at it. And here's the kicker. Elon Musk, as usual, dropped a hint that adds some extra intrigue. He teased on X that metallic shielding supplemented by ullage gas or liquid film cooling is back on the table as a possibility. Translation? SpaceX is thinking about combining metallic and ceramic solutions to create a heat shield that's not just tougher, but also more efficient in terms of mass. That's huge, because the lighter you can make your spacecraft, the more fuel efficient it is. And when you're planning missions to Mars, every ounce counts. One of the biggest hurdles? A fully reusable heat shield. Right now, Starship designs feature over 18,000 individual heat shield tiles. And with future, larger designs, that number could go even higher. Think about that for a second. Replacing thousands of heat shield tiles after each mission 
would be a logistical nightmare and an expensive one at that. So if SpaceX is going to stick to its plan of rapid, reusable spacecraft launches, the heat shield has to be entirely reusable as well. But the good news is SpaceX is already making headway. After Flight 4, they upgraded the heat shield significantly, with stronger flaps and extra protective layers. By Flight 5, these changes helped Starship achieve its first controlled vertical landing. And with Flight 6, they tested even further by removing over 2,100 tiles in specific areas to see how the shield holds up under real-world conditions. Every little tweak is a step towards solving one of the most complex problems in aerospace engineering. The ultimate test of this heat shield? SpaceX plans to catch Starship using the Mechazilla Tower Arms. Yeah, you heard that right, catching the spacecraft mid-flight. Talk about a jaw-dropping finale. If this works, it'll mark a whole new level of reusability for space travel. So while SpaceX is testing, tweaking, and improving the heat shield, they're also pushing the envelope on how spacecraft are landed and reused. It's a crazy exciting time to watch what's unfolding. With each test, each flight, SpaceX is getting us one step closer to sending humans to Mars. And the heat shield system? Well, it's one of the biggest keys to making that happen. While aerodynamics plays a huge role during the re-entry and landing phases, Starship is primarily built for vertical ascent through the atmosphere and space. Its design focuses more on successful vertical launches and spaceflight than on aerodynamic efficiency. Back in 2012, when Elon Musk first started the development of Starship, especially during its initial test flights, there were plenty of people who said it wouldn't work. And I mean, fair enough, because it is quite a revolutionary concept even now. I still distinctly remember hearing people question how this design could ever succeed in the world of rocketry, especially when compared to traditional rockets. So it's quite a big feat that SpaceX has managed to accomplish, with the very same design some called silly. Given the progress made so far, it seems more practical for SpaceX to focus on enhancing the reliability of the grid fins and other systems before moving forward with an attempt to catch the ship. A more robust system will not only improve safety, but also increase the likelihood of achieving the ultimate goal of full rocket reusability. A critical step for future missions, including payload launches, Starship HLS development, and eventually Mars colonization. Our next episode is going to be really exciting. So if you've made it this far, make sure you tune in for the next video as well. I'd love to see everyone who watched today's video show up for the next one too. It's going to be packed with even more intriguing details. Stay tuned and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Universus.